The following interview was conducted with Robert J. Silkman, class of 1942, Bachelor of Science in Science for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, May the 31st, 2011 in Stewart Center by phone. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome, Dr. Silkman, and thank you again for sharing, uh, giving us this opportunity to share your reminiscences of Purdue and other things. Let's start, uh, start, tell us where and when you were born and your parents in early years. Okay, I was born in Boston in, 19, in July 31, 1921. Okay. And, and go ahead. What else did you want? Uh, about siblings and early, and then uh, well, early years no, in high school. Okay. I have no siblings. I went to high school. I went to Memorial High School and then Boston Latin. Okay. And then went to Purdue. Okay. Uh, what was high school like? Any clubs or uh, athletics participation? Well, I did track and a couple of other things, but okay. it was an all-male school. Okay. Life was so different then. You had <laughs> in their proms and all that sort of stuff that it is today. So it was a little different. All the Boston schools were like that. Oh, okay. All righty. Okay. Uh, then uh, I'm just going to ask you, how did you happen to select uh, Purdue? Well, I had no Coming friends. a distance from there. Well, it's was a distance then because sure. twenty nine dollars and fifty cents I could get a round trip ticket from <laughs> South Station in Boston to uh, lot to Indianapolis. Well, that's pretty good. They're damn good. They're damn good is right. I'd like to see yeah. those days come back. Right. Well, I always thought I'd want to go into medical school, and I had a friend that had gone to Purdue, uh -huh. who'd done the same thing, and then he went to Tufts College Medical School in Boston, now Tufts University School of Medicine. Uh huh. And it was a thing to do, I suppose. Part of it, I guess, was to see a little bit of the country. Mm-hmm. Okay. So and you, go ended ahead. Up, it was the best thing I think I did. Good. Well, tell us one a of the best things. The best thing was I married my wife. That okay. was a okay. prime so, thing. Sounds good. Tell us a little okay. about college at Purdue. At Purdue is far different than what it is today. First of all, the whole campus is so different. Mm -hmm. And if I think back, I remember Cary Halls were just they were just starting to complete the uh and complete the rectangle okay so only two of the buildings were there and those are closer over to the uh, memorial gym okay and the stadium held about twenty-two thousand people and there was nothing else out beyond there and all route 52 as it is today was just nothing huh. when uh <clears throat> i stayed at my freshman year i stayed at uh uh, Mrs. Coe's is a boarding place for 35 fellows, right opposite the main entrance of the Union Building. Oh. And where the, gar where the excuse me, where the garage is today, the Grand Street garage, there were houses there on Grand Street? Yeah, there were houses okay. there, Okay, yes. okay, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, you interrupt any time. Okay, go ahead. And this trolley car went by, and every once in a while, if we had to go across town rather than hitchhike, we would just go pull the trolley, and he'd come up and fix it, and everybody would get on the trolley. It was a nickel <laughs> in those days. <laughs> so I remember all that. Okay. And the campus was so different. Uh, there was nothing beyond Earhart, the female uh, women dorms. Okay. That was all empty. Okay. And I remember the Union Building, the new wing which is now the residential area for the hotel and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Was just being completed. The music hall was completed in 1940, in the spring of 1940. Mm -hmm. And it was just amazing to walk from the old part, of the original part of the Union Building, and walk out to the library, which is now incorporated in the whole new complex, Stewart Center and all that stuff. Correct. As is Loeb and Fowler Hall. Loeb and Fowler were all separate little buildings. Oh, Fowler was still uh, a separate building when you came? Yep. Huh. Okay, all right. So all the other area, and then the Evelyn Hall, the original was there. The chemistry building wasn't there. Okay. The biology building, Coulter Hall was still there, and of course, University Hall and so forth. That sure. whole area was there. Okay. And next to... Uh, for, uh, the biology building, Coulter Hall, was a physics, old physics building, and we had physics and so forth in there. <clears throat> I think that later became something with speech and auditory and psychology, and finally sure. they tore it down and put out a beautiful student lecture hall today. Right, where the class of 1950 building yeah, is. Okay. That's right. Okay, all right. And I remember Memorial Gym, 
because that was a woman's gym, and I remember there were times, as a freshman, of course, we had to wear those stupid green beanies, which I did half the time. <laughs> and then uh, we had a tradition, which I think has faded. The seniors wore corduroy pants. Oh, yeah, the and they, grew, and they grew mustaches. Oh. And huh. prior to the first home football game, freshmen could waylay these people and shave off the mustaches with no shaving cream, of course. And also, if you could, you could strip the pants and put it up on a flagpole. Oh, oh, oh what a tradition. Wow, that's good Good for the history of our, for our researchers. They'll appreciate that. It, it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And, of course, it turned the other way when I was a senior because I ran like heck, so nobody would <laughs> catch me with... with uh, Right. Literally, my pants down. <laughs> right, right. Let me ask you a question. What was the ag campus like? Uh, State Street, of course, was here, was it not? Because the trolley yeah. went along State Street? Right. Okay, okay. And the ag campus was like some of the older section today. Of course, the vet center, all that wasn't, none of that was there. That's correct, I know. And the dairy was there, of course, where you get ice cream. Sure, and Smith and, Hall. And uh, Lily Hall wasn't there, of course. Okay, okay. Was Mar- uh, I don't think marriage student housing. What was there? Was there any housing uh, no, along no, State Street? No, okay. No, no marriage student housing up by the uh, uh, football stadium today. All that area was all there. There was okay. nothing up there. Okay, okay. Very. That's good for the researchers. They'll appreciate that. It's a nice uh, focus view of the campus the layout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can I can picture some of it still. Oh sure, yeah. Having looked at some of the older pictures of campus, I'm I'm with you. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> and then we had classes, and a lot of classes, and we needed 147 semester hours to wow. graduate. So it meant you took a, a big load, and especially taking pre-med, I took two and three lab courses every semester. Sure. Plus, we had to take liberal arts courses. Incidentally, I'm sure you remember in those days, nobody could get a uh, Bachelor of Arts. You could major in English, okay. and you had to get a Bachelor of Science, which meant everybody had to take some biology, some chemistry, and so forth. Oh, that, that clarifies. I was not aware of that. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, there was no Phi Beta Kappa then, because that's a little liberal arts. Right, right. You know, okay. To deal to with, with something to deal with, so. Uh-huh. Anyway, the other thing, too, is if you maintain, this is something you may or may not be aware My tuition, incidentally, for out of state was $250 per right. year. Now you can mull that, really mull it over. Right. <laughs> but that's a good, that's very good, and others have shared with the same thing, because we put it in the times in which we're talking about, and that, sure. that's what appropriate, so people don't jump at it and say, wow, they're, they're looking at it, they're researching this particular era of which you were a, part, a, a participant mm. in. Very mm-hmm. good point. Okay. Um, the other thing... Oh, excuse me. No. Go ahead. What about the, was the memorial, uh, memorial uh, the, uh, the correct didn't exist at that time, did it? You didn't have a correct? Oh, Lord, no. Look, okay. that wasn't even a dream. Okay, okay. Nobody so, had that. Um, the, Lambert, was Lambert Fieldhouse here? Yes. Okay, all right, no. okay. Go ahead. That was a big gym and basketball was played in there. That's correct, okay, all right. Okay. And, and they had that big bleacher accident, you know, in there. That's too. right, that was later, though. That was much not later. My, oh, yeah. Oh, no, that was much later, that's right. Okay, go ahead. The other, the other thing, too, is you became a distinguished student with a certain grade point, and they would knock off $30 from your tuition. Wonderful. Very nice. And that would that be each third. semester that they would knock off if your GPA was pretty for good? For a year. For oh, for a year. year. Okay, okay. No, excuse me. I think it was for the semester. Okay. You're right. Okay. But that was uh, a good thing, and a couple of times I was lucky to make it. Once yeah. or twice there because you had to take phys ed and military and so forth, they would knock you off a tenth sure. of a point so you couldn't make it. Right, yeah. The armory, I think, must have been here. Was that where ROTC was in the armory? Yes. Okay, the armory was a building that was here. everybody took military. All the males took military for two years. Okay, okay. And then if you so desired, and you could go on and take the advanced course, making you a second lieutenant eventually. Okay. Did many but people... I didn't, I didn't do that. I was going to med so or at least i hope to sure so mr silkman did did many people take advantage of that uh, se- third and fourth year for the rotc for the military at that time yes okay i know my roommate bob height and floyd mcdonald they all took it okay okay but those were mostly were engineers and so forth and I they see. were 
And, you know, when I first got there, there was no war. That's right. You came in, what, 1939, is that correct? I came, yes. Okay, go ahead. And then in, uh, right after Pearl Harbor, I remember, I got home for a vacation, got home with a postcard, you'll take final exams the day you get back. And from then on, we accelerated. Okay, okay. So therefore, I got out in December of 42 instead of June of 43. Okay. And later at uh, one of the reunions and so forth, we all decided to be the class of 42. Okay. <coughs> okay. What was commencement like? Was it in the Elliott Hall of Music? Yes. Okay. So you had a full, yep. com full commencement in, in December? Yes. Okay. Right. And we all still walked up as you do today and shook whoever's hand was president and okay. so forth and sure. so on. That probably we would have been Ed Elliot, uh, President Elliot. It was he. And the other thing is we uh, had we could all fit in, of course. When I started, and I'm almost certain it was 7,200 people. Mm hmm and one-fifth of the ratio was five boys to one girl Wow! at the time. Wow. <laughs> and maybe only, but there might have been two or three girls that got into engineering and so forth. Uh -huh. So I'm very happy that things have changed because I'm sure they're more competent than men many times. <laughs> right, okay. What about uh, social events? Were those uh, some events, were they, would they have been in the union? They were in the unions, okay. and sometimes they'd have Saturday night uh, dance and so forth. Sure, okay. What about there the... There wasn't the amount of social events going on now. Okay. Don't mis misunderstand. When we had what we called a, oh, a little passport, and we had tickets for football and basketball. Sure. And convocations. All right. And the convocations were wonderful. Mm-hmm. We had, uh, even in my era, we had uh, the the uh, opera company from New York. We had people like, names you may not remember, Gladys Swarthout, Grace sure. Moore were famous singers. They all appeared there. Right. I right. remember seeing uh, Frank Sinatra when he was with Tommy Dorsey and he, they played at the Hall they, of Music. They came to Purdue? Oh, yep. wow, what a treat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. Really, they all, every, it was just amazing. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> and of course, the place was already, already packed. Oh yeah, right. And everybody was, and that building today is still the nicest building. It around. is. It is very nice. It's very and nice. People who haven't been there just can't visualize. I know. It. I, I I thought that the first time I went there years ago. <laughs> I agree. Uh, well, I thought about it when they dedicated it. Uh, that's right. Let me ask <laughs> and you. That th goes back before you. Sure. Let me ask you this: How did the campus change when the war broke out? Could you make a comment on that? Well. Of course, I wasn't there. I was oh. there, but it didn't change that much. Okay, and you were there for just a fairly short period of time after the war broke out in December of Yeah, I got out, well, one year we sure. did it, so that we didn't have an influx of people. They did start the Naval ROTC, Okay. I remember, in 42, Okay. While before you were I left. Okay, all right. And then, of course, after I left in 43, they had the best football team they ever had because all the Big Ten stars were sent to Purdue for their naval training. Oh, and they played football as well? And they played football. Oh, wow. <laughs> so here I am in Boston going to medical school, and in 1943 I said, gee, when we were at school we won two and lost <laughs> six, and now they're champions and I'm not there. <laughs> I don't like those odds, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. All righty. Then let's move on. After you got your graduation, then what came next? Well, <laughs> there were a couple of little things I might mention if you want. Please do. Deeks was very famous. Deeks uh, bookstore. Right, okay. In the village. Right. And of course, what happened, they had a system of banking. We never used that Purdue State Bank, you know, at the corner. Mm -hmm. It's changed now, I know the name. Sure. And we'd go in with a check for 10 or $15 and put it and deposit it. And every time you needed a book, You'd go in, and a couple of my classmates, Janie Ostrander, worked in there and so forth. We'd see them and buy a book for 50 cents or a dollar, and they'd mark it down and take it off, and then when you got broke, you, they re, you'd replenish it. Hmm. But the funniest thing, and I recall this recently, thinking about it, <clears throat> Deke's son did most, a lot of the work there. Even older Deke, was, he was a little more 
elderly at the time when I was there, but he was still active. And then I asked his son, I've forgotten his first name. Uh -huh. Everybody was deep then anyway. Sure. And I said, well, where's, he said he went to Harvard. And I said, gee, that's kind of stupid. I came all the way from that area to come here, and you went from here to Harvard. How come? He said, I don't know. We just happened to do it. And I said, well, that's part of my reasoning, too. <laughs> <laughs> nice little quip. <laughs> the other thing is there was a Brits market above Triple X, and it was a big market, vegetable market. Now, they're one of their boys that worked there, and whom we were very friendly was a pre-med, Bob Britt, who just expired about a year ago. And then we've been friends since then. <clears throat> and he went on to Cincinnati School of Medicine, and then he was down to practice in Evansville for quite a while. So those are the things that will just come up. Very good. That's. I gather, the, uh, did you uh, go to the Triple X very often? Every Sunday. Oh, great. I love Every the Triple tomorrow, X. We, for 25 cents, you know, I still do. Every time we've come out there, we go. Absolutely. I have lunch there quite often, every, almost every Friday. <laughs> well, even my, my son and daughter and I are both Purdue people. Uh huh. They love it also. Oh, it's just great, you know. And, of course, they were on that diners program, and I videoed and saved it, and I've enjoyed watching it even afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Okie doke. Oh, well, after commencement, then you went to medical school. And was that at Tufts? Yeah. Is that where you it's went? Tough. Yeah, okay. Tufts School of Medicine. Okay. Yeah, Tufts University School of Medicine. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and I started there in April of 43. Okay. In the meantime, I registered for the draft in 1940, and to this day I've never heard from them. Oh, that's interesting. They'll, they'll get I, your number one of these days. Oh, they did. <laughs> you may get a call. <laughs> they know, Well, they may now. They may not want me. <laughs> and as I've told them, if you want me now, you have to put a star on my shoulder. That's it. <laughs> That'll stop them immediately. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but I was commissioned second lieutenant in uh, medical reserve, and that's how I was protected all those years. Okay. All right. Uh, then go ahead. What uh, after you finished? Uh, me anything? Any comments on medical school? Anything you'd like to share with us? Mm, not particularly. Except okay. you have, if you do it, you have to be stupid. Oh, it's a tough racket. Yeah. How large was your class? We had 112 when we started, four okay. girls, uh -huh. and finished with 102. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> and not only that, when uh, I started in civilian clothes, and then after I was less, less than a year, of course, we accelerated. We did the whole thing in three years instead of four. Oh, wow. And didn't drop anything. We never had really, and we had the army eventually to contend with too. Sure. Because the army, like ASTP, they took over, and that was it. Okay. And we got through that okay, fortunately. Sure. But I have a granddaughter who's just finishing medical school, and she's getting a residency in family practice. Okay. Is she and a t is she a Tufts like you were? Or? No, no, oh. she's a different school. Oh, but okay. she's going to be in Maine. Oh. And she, she's from Maine now. Okay. Richard, my oldest, lives there. Uh huh. So she's got her residency in primary practice up there. Very good. Well, that's that's but a nice feeling. I told her all the years it's just stupid, stupid, <laughs> stupid. And she looked at me and I said, you know, that makes me doubly stupid because I do it all over again. <laughs> okay. All right. After you got your medical, so let's talk about the career and tell us about after that, and I'll leave it up to you. What would you like to share? Well, after that, I interned for 15 months at Worcester City Hospital, uh -huh. which is Worcester's the second largest city in New England. Mm -hmm. In a big active place, and did a, uh, an internship in those days considered of you do a month on this, two months on that, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it was a good learning experience, very good. I did a lot of it down to Boston City, too. So between the both places, and in those days, of course, most people had no insurance, so you're always busy. Yeah. After that, I got, had to go in the Army. So I reported down to Fort Sam as a first lieutenant and went through all the training, and et cetera, and then all said to go to Germany. And then after about a year, they said, no, we never to give it a few of them. I think they knew Korea was coming. Uh huh. So I got out and I went back to uh, City Hospital and did my surgical residency there. And that was for another four years. Hmm. 
And the best thing that happened was that I met my wife, Pat Hargrove. Okay. And we eventually got married, and best thing, she was a nurse, student nurse at the time. Okay. So it was made in heaven. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And then I went out into practice. In the, practice. in the Boston area, or? In Worcester. Oh, Worcester, okay, all right. And this was uh, um, in 52. Okay. Three months later, I got noticed to report down to Fort Sam and go through that whole thing again for Korea. So I went down and went through everything. They said, well, you're not supposed to be here. There were about 300 of us because I had already been in. Mm -hmm. And they said they didn't know what was going on. They had no way of, they didn't know where I was going. I stayed there four months of temporary duty at Brook Army General Hospital and all that stuff. Finally, my orders came through to go to Formosa, Taiwan. <clears throat> and they, again, didn't know anything. I found out when I got home that the FBI was investigating me for top secret clearance to go over there. Why, I don't know. <clears throat> I think it was routine, who knows. Yeah. So then I spent a year and a half there and then got out. Okay, your wife was, did not go with you though. She came oh. over. I missed Jeffrey, my middle son, by three weeks. Oh, okay. And I was there for about eight months, and the war ended, uh -huh. and then they allowed people to come over. Oh, okay. So she came over, and how she ever made the trip, I don't know. It was a six-month-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old person oh. on prop planes. Oh, wow. 33 hours of flight with an hour off at Hawaii an hour off at Midway, and then I met her up in Tokyo. Oh, wow. What a trip. You don't forget those. <laughs> Never. Never. See, I hear people say, oh, it takes 15, 16 hours to go to Hong Kong now. I okay. said, oh, I get out my handkerchief and dry my eyes. <laughs> right. That's a piece of cake <laughs> oh, <laughs> compared God. to what your wife experienced. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I did it, and I went over sure. there, but I was alone. I didn't have to worry about kids. That's right. Exactly. Anyway, that turned out well. Mm-hmm. Then I came home and practiced. And did what what sort all. of practice did you have? Were you in surgery? General surgery. General yes. surgery. Okay. In my era, we did everything. Okay. Head and neck, thyroids. Uh -huh. I did female surgery, GYN, all that stuff. Okay. They don't do that anymore. Oh. There's more specialized? Is that the big change? Well, a lot of them will do it. Okay. We did everything. Okay. All right. Amazing. I'll tell you an anecdote. The amazing thing. <clears throat> we have. <coughs> oh, excuse me, damn pollen around here. Mm -hmm. Is that we had uh, uh, GYN people working and so forth. Mm -hmm. The nurses always had uh, surgeons do it, do their work. The surgical nurses. Mm -hmm. That speaks for itself. Okay. Okay. I'm not bragging. No, I understand. To a point. Okay. The other thing is, I was with me and the rest of my crew. We were instrumental in getting the medical school, UMass Medical School of Medicine, medical school in Worcester. So, as a matter of fact, I did the first general surgical case there. I remember it was a thyroid. Mm -hmm. And we taught residents, you know, did all that sort of stuff for many years. And the school is flourished and it's excellent school now. Mm -hmm. That was started in about the 60s, so. Okay. okay. And I, practiced for 30 years and all of a sudden I decided the heck with it and that was it. Okay, so you you, 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 know, you gave up your practice, huh, in surgery? Well, I, I hit 64 and I said, you know, I'm going to stop, retire at the top, not the bottom. Okay. Sounds good. Let's talk, can I talk about your family, uh, sure. the children that uh, came to Purdue? Talk about your children. Did Richard, so okay. Richard went to Purdue. He's my oldest. All right. And what did he make? Major in? He majored in economics. He okay. was a credit. Okay. And then from there, he went on to Yale, got his Ph.D. in economics, urban public policy. Mm -hmm. Also, he met Lynn at Purdue. She had, was at Pittsburgh and from Pittsburgh and transferred from the University of Pittsburgh to Purdue okay. and majored in all things art history. Okay. Did very well in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, then from there, well, he 
taught down at Stony Brook and Long Island. Then he went to Maine, and he worked and taught at the University of Southern Maine in Portland, and did that for a few years. And then Governor McKernan, when he became governor, took Richard and into his cabinet, and he became director of planning for the state of Maine. Mm, okay. <clears throat> and he left after seven years because, of course, the governor had to give up his uh, duty and tour of duty. And then he opened his own, and uh, he and a friend have an outfit called Competitive Energy. Mm -hmm. And he got into energy and supplying energy to places like L.L. Bean that you know and recognize sure. and so forth. Okay. Now he's mixed up in some of the windmill structures and turbines oh. and all that sort of thing. Okay, all right. <laughs> We've got some of those being built up near Rensselaer. If you see Sandy, you can ask her about his place now at uh, Scarborough okay. in Maine on the beach. Okay. And she, cause she visited and loved the place too. All right, yeah, I'm making a note. Okay. Do you okay. Have that's uh, for your own personal. And if you <laughs> want to come here sometime, come anytime. I, I'll mark that on my calendar. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have any other children, sir? Jeffrey is number two. Okay. When he went to Springfield College and played football. Okay. Sounds and good. And his knees. Oops. And all that problem. And then finally he went on. He did as an insurance work. Mm -hmm. And he coached. He coached at Brown, at Worcester State, and was the part was the polytech and so forth okay but he's mostly in insurance and they have two he has two children okay one of them is jared he's only 13 now uh -huh. but alex went to uh he's at unh university of new hampshire mm -hmm. richard has two other children ross is his oldest and ross went to uh, william and mary and he's now up in alaska married i have two great grandchildren okay one is now eight one two okay both one i don't get to see them too much no, but I mean, they come in and i go up to maine and we'll get together okay sounds good <laughs> and lee is his number two daughter number one daughter but number two child mm -hmm. and she went to uh university of california santa cruz and left after one semester she said they were all smoking pot and went to the University of Vermont. And then she went to BU and got a master's in public health. And now she's just finishing medical school there mm -hmm. and got her residency. Okay. Leslie <coughs> is his third, and she graduated from Purdue a couple of years ago. And she was in hotel management, hospitality, and so forth. Did very well. Ended up with a 4.0 average on how she did it, but Sounds she's good. a nice, nice girl. Uh -huh. Sandy knows her, mm -hmm. and because Sandy's daughter, I think, was at the school at the same time. Oh, okay, all right. What so is Leslie, she? Leslie, Leslie left, and she's down at Hilton Head because they all came back from Hilton Head recently visiting her. Okay. And she works for uh, Marriott. Okay. When she left Purdue, she was lucky to get a job. Mm -hmm. And has been doing very well, and they've been pushing her into management, which is wants wants to do, and so forth. And she's very happy about it. Good, sounds good. I had a student that worked for me and got her degree in that. And I said, you know, when you get the hotel, do you think I? Oh no, they. She said, Miss Markey, I don't think so, but you can always come and visit me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> when, um, when Lee has to go someplace, she calls Leslie, and, and Leslie gets a room for her. Sure. Well, I, I <coughs> might as well. And, yeah, Richard and Lee and Lynn were down recently, just mm -hmm. this past weekend, uh -huh. and she got a, uh, it's a condo, a Marriott condo, and Richard got back last night, so he called, said it was beautiful, oh. and she got a uh, two-bedroom, two-bath, right on the beach, and it was $79 a night. I said, you have to be kidding. Oh, my Lord. He said, yeah, but it, it, to anybody else, it's about 530 Oh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> so, they they've done well. Right. Uh, let's talk about you. You have you participated? I have a daughter. Oh, okay. Another sorry. Another daughter. Uh -huh. Toby. Toby Mooney. Mm-hmm. And she has two kids. Now Toby went to uh, transfer from Springfield College to the University of Colorado at Boulder. Mm-hmm. And loved it, and went into eventually 
went into uh, paralegal work, <clears throat> and then uh, Phil Rollins, the head DA down here, made her go to law school, she, which she did. And she's gone through with being an assistant DA, and now she's a uh, district court judge. Oh, okay. In Massachusetts? In Mass. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, good. She only she lives quite close here. Mm -hmm. And her two kids, Allison, went to uh, University of Colorado at Boulder, and so did Brian. They would have gone to Purdue, but they said it's too flat, and they're all skiers <laughs> and snowboarders. That's and I can appreciate sure, that. Sure, that's right. Not around here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Allison, <coughs> she's over in Korea, South Korea, teaching English mm. to kids uh, 5 to 11, you know, in our private schools. This mm -hmm. is her second year. Mm -hmm. And she went, over to, she went over to try it and liked it, and Toby said, don't come back because there's no jobs. Mm-hmm. And um, Brian stayed in, and he stays in Denver, mm -hmm. okay. and is a very good position in real estate, commercial real estate appraisal, and that stuff. Okay. He talks about going on to business school or law, but so far he isn't. Okay. He's 25 now. So. Okay. All right. Got to take care of the family. Yeah, take care of the family and the grandchildren, everybody. That's great. How about uh, have you participated in the alumni association? Do you come back? Do you come back for some events or? Your place, uh, Purdue. Purdue. Uh huh. I can show you all around that campus. Oh, okay. Well, we're back every year. Okay. When are you are <laughs> well, you coming had, this fall for the homecoming or? I can't. I, okay. I'm just my problem is I have had spinal stenosis and a couple of ops. Okay. And my legs don't allow me to matriculate too much. Okay. All right. But prior to that time, we were there. As a matter of fact, when Pat and I got married, we had to do it secretly because if they had known that. She was dating one of the house officers at the time that they were thrown out of school. Oh, okay. All right. And I couldn't get a week's vacation no matter what. Sure. Finally, when I ended up with my fifth year, and I got was on pathology, I got a, a week off. And we had already been married now for a year. <laughs> already had Richard by that time. <laughs> and she, I said, well, let's take a ride. She says, where? I said, we're going to Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we drove out to Purdue and then Chicago, of course, and sure. so forth. So that was her indoctrination. Oh, okay, you brought her to the, to the central part of the country. <laughs> yeah. And then <clears throat> I was very good friends. I don't know if you knew Jan Horner. Mm, I don't think so. And Jack Horner. Jack used to run, he went to Dartmouth because his aunt paid his way. Jack ran, was the head man for the Arnett Clinic. Oh, okay. For a number of years. Mm -hmm. And we became the best of friends. So we were there, they were here, and we were always out every year. Mm -hmm. So I've been back a lot. Okay. Except for the last couple of years, and it drives me crazy. Yeah. Because I can't, but... A little bit of a... All right, <clears throat> okay. Uh, when I was at Purdue, <clears throat> and I worked for Dr. Cable, he was a parasitologist, taught biology and stuff, and I got an NYA job, and I got 10 bucks a month because I could work 20 hours, and I got 50 cents an hour, mm -hmm. and I worked for him mounting slides and all this sort of thing, which I enjoyed, of course. Oh, yeah. And he really was a mentor of mine, getting to medical school and so forth and so on, and we always came back to see him, mm -hmm. no matter what we did. And... One of the most famous things that I can remember, a lot of things, but this always stood out in my mind. We, he had been out for a few years. He still had his office over at Lily. And I said, how's about retirement? Do you like it or not, Dr. Cable? He said, Bob, best thing about retirement, no more interdepartmental meetings. And I thought that was a classic statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was great. As a matter of fact, I have there's a cable Silkman fellowship scholarship. Mm -hmm. We've made that. Oh, that's nice. I hear from the kids. They also, a lot of them have gone on to medicine and every I've been doing it. They all get a scholarship for at least a thousand bucks a year. Or something. That's very. And it nice. allows the undergraduates, and it's mostly for kids who are interested in biology and parasitology or sciences, mm -hmm. so they run that, and it's very good, very. it works well. 
Very nice. That's good. Yeah. Um, let's see. How about any hobbies or special interests that you'd like to share with us? <laughs> well, I never played golf. It took too long, and you never worked at it. <laughs> but I used to play tennis a lot when okay. I got a chance. Sure. But of course, these things I can't do anymore. Right. But that's kind of, that's kind of my sport, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, we were always going to the beach. Mm -hmm. Kids always went when they were young, and we always went up to Maine. How I ended up down the Cape, I don't know, but I love it down here, too. Yeah. Do you have a, a place at the Cape? Is that where you yeah. live now? or? Or do well, we bought a place, okay. and then we left Worcester and sold house and came down here oh, okay. permanently in 84. Oh, okay. When I gave up practice, I was on the board of directors for uh, Blue Shield of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And then when I quit work, a couple of weeks later at one of the board meetings, they said, geez, we'd love to have you come work part-time. And it worked out pretty well, because I would go up to Boston a couple of days a week and do a lot of work. Sure. Medicare problems. And All right. Nothing to do with patients. All right. So it was a complete change for me. All right. So it, they were utilizing your expertise and you, it gave you something to do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Oh, man, it, was, it was good and it allowed me to bow out gracefully, sure. more gracefully. All right, exactly. Than, pre than precipitously, I would guess. Very good point. Okay. How about a Purdue tradition? Does anyone, uh, any tradition you'd like to share with us? Purdue tradition? All of them. Okay, that's good. That's nice. Seriously. We, yeah, I know, they are. I can, great. I can still sing all the songs. I can. I still remember a, a locomotive cheer. They don't do it anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> but as far as anything that they do, it, to me, is traditional. It, I'm glad to see that they came back with the cords for the men and the mm -hmm. uh, girls used to wear cord skirts. Right. I think that has come back to a point. Right. They, and they are nice. We've gotten in the archives, we've gotten a few as gifts. And one time when we got one of the skirts, and the, the uh, she said, do you want to try it on? I said, I don't think so. I just, we'll just take it as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still have my old cords. Uh-huh. They're downstairs in the cellar. Sure. That's okay. And Toby said, oh, God, you could put them on. I said, in the pig's eye. Oh, I I've, I've talked to some people who've gone to the games, and they're still wearing them. So I'm going to test them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, how about an outstanding event or events that you'd like to have one you'd like to share with us? You mean as far as Purdue's concerned? Anything, anything in your life, just outstanding well, events? Well, I, I, I always promised that if Purdue went to the Rose Bowl, we'd go. Okay. And, of course, they went in 67. Correct. 66, 67. Right. When, uh, oh, not Breeze. Breezy was there, uh, the quarterback. Right. And Floyd McDonald, I roomed with him my freshman year. We were friendly for years. He and Emma Bell, wonderful people. And they lived in San Bernardino. So they had everything all arranged. I had one problem in going. It meant we were going to miss Christmas here. And Pat wasn't too happy. Mm -hmm. I said, look, we have to give up something. So Christmas Eve, I remember we ended up at Santa Barbara in the restaurant and it was all lighted and sure. they had some eggnog and that pacified things That's to right. a point. I know, I understand. <laughs> yeah, but we uh, did that whole trip. And did you then, Did uh, you go by train? No, what? we drove, oh, we you... flew at that time. Oh, okay. This right. is 67. Okay, okay, because a lot of people from here, I understand, went by train. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. no. Okay. Well, I would have gone and I had it all done. I had tickets because the kids and Bridget had gotten tickets through Enron at the time. Mm -hmm. So that all of us, the men, were all set to go to, there were six of us, all set to go in the year 2000. Right. <clears throat> but I'm fat. <coughs> Excuse me. Unfortunately, Pat was so damn sick, I wouldn't leave. And then, of course, you left the, this damn world anyway. But. Oh. So I didn't, I didn't go, mm -hmm. but they brought back everything. And as a matter of fact, Richard had gotten a ticket, so we gave it to me for Christmas, all framed with oh, the cover of the that's paper nice. and so forth. That's very nice. Yeah, so. It worked out. It was okay. Yeah, it worked out. Right. I didn't go either, and I enjoyed watching it. <laughs> oh, I, and I listening to people it. who'd been. <laughs> I know, but there's nothing like going. Oh, I know, right. How about, uh, in closing, anything that I forgot to ask, or I'll leave it up to anything you'd like to share with us? <clears throat> well, 
I, I don't know. I think you've covered things pretty okay. well. Okay. All I, I say that uh, I have a lot of friends down here. Pat and I met a lot of people on the beach. And oh, I bet. all become good friends. So they include me in everything at the moment. Right. So Is your house on the beach or? No, mm. we're about, mm, if the crow flies, a oh. half mile. Oh, how from nice. The beach. Yeah. But it's gorgeous. Oh, I do. Beautiful bet. spot. I've got that on my agenda. Someday I hope to visit the Cape. I never have. Well, you come, you're welcome. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you're very kind. Sandy I will let you know. <laughs> Sandy comes, and she loves it here, too. Sure, I'm sure. Well, I'll, I'm certainly going to share. Tell, I told her that I had this interview uh, scheduled, so I will share with her, and I'll mention about uh, Scarborough. She'll, uh, she's been there. Yeah, she'll know. <laughs> okay, all righty. Thank you very much. Um, oh, you're welcome. Uh, I have enjoyed chatting with you, and we'll keep in touch, I'm sure. It'll be a little bit of a time before we'll send the transcript, but you'll get a draft to look at before we put it on our system. Well, I think that's nice to include me. Well, I thank you very much, and you have a good summer, and uh, we'll keep in touch. All right. Okay, bye-bye now. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you.